Hi friends, here's my recap of study article five, which is found in the February 2021 Watchtower. This study article will be studied at Jehovah's Witness meetings the week of April the 4th, 2021. But notice the preview. It says, in this article, we will discuss what headship is, why Jehovah established it, and what men can learn from the example. In paragraph one, what's underlined, it says, note what Yanita, a sister who lives in Europe says, where I live, there is a deeply ingrained view that women are inferior to men and should be viewed as servants. Hmm. And a brother named Luke who lives in the US says, some fathers teach their sons that women should be seen and not heard. However, those attitudes do not reflect the way Jehovah wants men to exercise their headship. They cite Mark 7.13 as an example of how Jehovah wants men to exercise their headship. But do you know what's going on in, Mac, in Mark chapter 7? Jesus is addressing the Pharisees, who were the religious leaders back in his day. He calls them hypocrites for forcing the people to follow their man-made rules, their t traditions. And isn't that interesting? In verse 6, he calls them hypocrites. In verse 7, he says, How be it in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Does that sound familiar? For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. And then in red is the verse that Watchtower told the reader to compare. It says, Making the word of God, of none effect through your tradition, which you have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Isn't that interesting? Once again, Watchtower is directing the reader to the undesirable. But isn't that what the governing body does? Don't they have their own traditions? If you smoke, you get disfellowshipped, disfellowshipping in and of itself. So many rules of the governing body, just like the Pharisees. I wonder what Jesus would call the governing body members if he was walking the earth today. Let's move on to paragraph three. In the box it says, Jesus is accountable to Jehovah for the way he treats us. What? They cite 1 Corinthians 15, 27 in support of this. On the left, that verse says, for he has put all things under his feet, meaning Jesus' feet. I don't see it there, friends. Where does it say that Jesus is accountable to Jehovah for the way he treats us? It's not there. But look at the next box. It says, a husband is accountable to both Jehovah and Jesus for the way he treats his family. And then they cite 1 Peter 3, verse 7, which on the right it says, Likewise ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Well, once again, I don't see it there, but we're gonna just continue moving on to paragraph seven. In the box, it says, if God's arrangement for headship is such a good thing, why do so many women today feel oppressed and dominated by their husband? Hmm. They may also abuse their wives to satisfy some selfish desire. For example, a husband might dominate his wife in an attempt to boost his self-respect or to prove to others that he is a real man. Let's just continue to move on here. Notice that paragraph nine says that Jehovah is the wisest person in existence. Really? Jehovah is a person with a capital P? You mean like a man? So Jehovah, the God of the Watchtower Corporation is both God and man, a person? Now this is a first, I'd never heard of this before. And how interesting that they cite Genesis chapter 18 in support of this. Friends, notice in Genesis 18, verses 1 and 2, which I put down at the bottom of the slide, I want to read this to you. What's underlined? And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. He ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord. So the Lord appeared to him. He saw three men. And he addressed them in saying, my Lord. Uh, verse four says, and rest yourselves under the tree and I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye your hearts. After that, ye shall pass on. Therefore, are you come to your servant? And they said, do as thou hast said. All right, friends, listen, I just want to recap this. 
In paragraph nine, it says, Jehovah is the wisest person in existence with a capital P. A person is a man. They cite Genesis 18, 23, 24, and 32. But Genesis chapter 18 is the account of what's called a theophany, okay? The word theophany comes from the Greek theophania, um, which means the appearance of God. In the first few verses of Genesis 18, deity was revealed on earth in a theophany of three men. Remember that the Lord told Moses that no man shall see me and live. But yet the Lord appeared to Abraham here. And Watchtower says that Jehovah is a person with a capital P, a person is a man. So what does this tell you, friends? The Lord appeared as a man to Abraham. This is one scripture that supports the Trinity, the triune God. But yet Watchtower is using this chapter, Genesis 18, to prove that Jehovah is a person with a capital P. Interesting. But moving along, we're almost done with this study article. There's really not much more. It goes on to practical advice in the next couple of paragraphs, um, but it's a bit elementary. I mean, really, do you need to tell the people this? But I want you to notice something in paragraph 19. I would like to read this to you. It says, make unselfish decisions. Jehovah made decisions that are in the best interests of others. For example, he decided to create life. Hmm. Not to benefit himself, but to share with us the joy of living. No one could have forced him to give his son to cover our sins. He willingly decided to make that sacrifice for our benefit. Jesus too made decisions that primarily benefit other, benefited others. All right, friends, I want to remind you, John chapter 1, verse 3. Now, John 1, 1, right? The word, the word in the beginning was the word. So we're talking about Jesus here because Jesus is the word. So John chapter one, verse three is talking about Jesus when it says, all things came into being through him and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. Who created life, friends? All things came into being through Jesus. Jesus is the creator, not the Jehovah of the Watchtower Corporation. And lastly, still in the book of John, John chapter 10, I want to remind you, Jesus said here, no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down myself, meaning his life. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my, of my father. So once again, you have the Jehovah of the Watchtower Corporation trying to take credit for what Jesus has done. Jesus is the creator. Jesus willingly gave his own life for the sins of mankind. So listen, friends, that's it for this article. There, there really wasn't much here. They give a lot of great practical advice in the article, but really, do adults need to be told these types of things? I don't know. Stay tuned for more of my videos, friends. Turn to Jesus today. He says, come as you are. You don't have to wait until things are right in your life. Come as you are and he will. He will save you, friends. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.